Uh, good morning to everyone present, our grade 12 learners and the teachers in the venues. Um, so welcome to economics uh, part online. So this morning we are going to continue with um, where we left off on Tuesday. So um, I'm just going to recap what we've done so far. Um, so we've done the concepts on Tuesday uh, for macroeconomics. And as we know that macroeconomics is a paper one topic. Um, and there are four topics in, or there are four topics under macroeconomics. So we have done the circular flow, business cycles, public sector, and foreign exchange. And then we have, of course, started to off with our um, Microeconomics. So microeconomics is a paper two, is a paper two uh, topic, and it will be tested in paper two. Um, and we have done the multiple choice. Um, and then of course, um, our time ran out. So now we're continuing today with our matching items. So matching items would be the second question that you'll find under section A, and this is normally um, eight marks. Um, so now you need to match the description which is found in column B with the with the term in column A. And I'm going to give um, you about um, five to eight minutes to complete this. And then, of course, you're more than welcome to share your answers. One thing that you should note: please change this letter M to J, please. Um, so that is an error. So please change that letter M to J, and then um, you may start. And then of course, please post your answer in the chat, but teachers, um, can we please post the answers as we are doing it um, so that I can recognize your school um, for the answers as well and give them the recognition. So thank you. So I'm going to give you about uh, four to eight minutes to complete this. Thank you.
Right, so I see that um, we have received a few answers. No, it does not. Um, the options do not go up to 1.2.9. It's up to um, 1.2.10 uh, for Santa Clara. And thank you for sharing your answers thus far, as well as Bureau 9.
Apologies. Um, I didn't know I was on mute the whole time. So can someone in the chat please tell me where I stopped? Um, see, I'm Tanda. Can you please tell me where I stopped talking? Okay, sorry, the last time. Thank you. The last time was 1.2.10, but um, can you also tell me, did I give the answer because I just saw now I was on mute? I didn't know I was on mute. Okay, thank you. So we are doing um, the description here, and I'm going to give you all about 10 minutes to complete it. Um, and then we'll compare it. Of course, this is what they ask us in 1.3 in section A as well throughout the question paper. They give you the term and they ask you to give the definition of it. So I'm going to give all the schools about 10 minutes to do it. And then you can post your answers in the chat. And I asked that the teachers um, would give their answers as we go along. So it's going to make it easier to acknowledge your school and the answers that they give. Thank you.
Right, so we are receiving our answer so far. Thank you to St. Andrews for giving your answer thus far. So I'm going to still give another few minutes for the other schools to also work through it and then we can compete together. Right. Thank you for the answers. It's coming in very fast. I do appreciate it. So let us compare our answers. So number one, they ask us that point where the firm can cover it, cover its cost and only earn a normal profit. And so far, um, the answers that's been coming is correct. So number one, from St. Andrews and for Santa Kral is break even point and you're correct. Number two, the total cost is greater than total revenue. So that is already a key word or a key element of our answer or a portion of our answer, I would say. And then they continue to tell us when average revenue is lower than average cost. So um, the answers that I've received so far, St. Andrew says it's a loss. So they are hot. They are halfway there, I would say, in terms of the answer. Um, for Santa Graal says it is an economic loss and they are correct. So that's why I said St. Andrews is halfway right to number two because they said it's a loss because the first part of the question tell you here, um, when total cost is greater than total revenue, and we all know that already if your cost of operating is greater than um, your income then you'll make a loss then number three they tell us here profit made in addition to normal profit when average revenue is greater than average cost and here they told us by number two average revenue is lower than average cost so let us look at our answers so then andrews says it is economic profit and um, Santa Claus says it's marginal revenue. And that's the only two answers that I've received so far. And 
St. Andrews, you are correct because they tell us here profit made in addition to normal profit. So that is your um, key words, I would say, in this particular description. Then moving on to number four, actual expenses of the business, for example, wages and interest. And St. Andrews, that is your explicit cost. Um, Sandra Garcia, that is your implicit cost. And that's all answers that I've received so far. And St. Andrews, you are correct, it is your explicit cost. Um, then, number five, the cost remains constant regardless of the quantity produced. So, St. Um, for Sandra Garcia, that is your fixed cost. And Andrew also said that your fixed cost and both of them are correct. So even if you produce one or you produce a hundred, your cost will remain the same. For example, rent. So to rent that building, you will still pay the same amount. Um, yes, insurance is another example of this. Then moving on, number six, similar or identical product. And the Santa Claus said homogeneous product, and they're correct, as well as uh, St. Andrews. And that's the only two schools that I've received interaction thus far. That's why I'm only mentioning them. So well done to the two, of, two schools, St. Andrews and for Santa Claus. Number seven, value of import, sorry, inputs owned by the entrepreneur and used in um, the production process. And they tell us in brackets, forgotten rain, interest and salary. So, um, the Santa Claus is at your explicit cost. And um, St. Andrews is imputed cost. And that's the only answer that I've received. Thank you. Oh, I see uh, uh, Fedo is also in the house. Thank you for your answer. That was for number six, homogeneous product. Um, could you just, for future reference, just um, put the number next to your answer, uh, Fedo. Thank you so much. Um, so this is where, that's why I didn't explain number four yet to you, the difference between the two. So um, number four, we see that was your explicit, so that is like the, the cost that you would have to fork out as a business. And then here, number seven, that is your implicit cost. So it's basically the cost that the owner has to fork out and also the cost that the owner um, has to fork on, for example, the opportunity cost. So if the owner had worked, um, that person would have received a salary. At the end of the day, but that person gave up his or her salary, and now put, and now um, starting this business venture, and then losing up on all of those perks at the end of the day. Number eight, the period of production where all factors can change. The time is long enough for variable and fixed factors to change. So number eight, for Santa Claus is at your long term. And St. Andrews is at your long run. Um, and both of them are correct. Both of them are correct. Well done. Then, an institution, number nine, or mechanism that brings together buyers and sellers of a good or a service. And this is the the basic terminology that you've learned in grade um, 10 already, um, and that is a market. That is what I received from St. Andrews. Number nine is a market, and that's also four. And well done. So that is a market. So it's an, it's an institutional mechanism that brings together your buyers or sellers, and then, of course, um, they would buy a good or a service. Number 10, how a market is organized. 
So this is also known as your market structure and St. Andrews have given us that answer as well. Well done, thank you. Then, number 11, the minimum earnings necessary to prevent an entrepreneur from leaving the industry. And this is where your average revenue is equal to your average cost. So I'm just going, just looking at your answers quickly. Then Andrew says normal profit. Thank you. The other schools, you're most welcome to also share your answers so that we can acknowledge you. So, of course, this will prevent the entrepreneur from leaving because um, at the end of the day, you need to make a profit in order to stay within a particular industry. Number 12, a market structure with large numbers of producers and buyers. Um, St. Andrew says perfect competition. Thank you. I see for Santa Claus is typing. Let's look what they have for us. Right, so for Santa Claus by number 13, we are now by number, we were by number 12. Um, number 13 does not influence the price and accepts the price determined by the market, and that is the individual business of um, the Santa Claus as says, and St. Andrews says that is a price taker, and St. Andrews, you are correct. Um, however, I would also agree with for Santa Claus because the individual business, um, they can't make their own price at the end of the day. They have to accept. So, however, the answer is price take up. Number 12, Fidel says number 12 is perfect competition and you are correct. Thank you, Fidel. Number 14, the period of production where only the variable factors of production can change while at least one factor is fixed. Santa Claus says that's a short term. Uh, St. Andrew says short run. And that's the only two answers that I've received so far. And the answer is short term. Thank you so much. Number 15. The business will close its door where its marginal revenue is equal to its average variable cost. And that is the shutdown point. Thank you for Santa Crow, as well as St. Andrews. So when the marginal cost, remember marginal is additional. And then cost, of course, additional cost that they have to fork out when they produce is equal to your average variable cost. And the business will unfortunately have to close its doors because it's not making a profit at the end of the day, no loss. Then, number 16, an institution whose main functions are to review orders made by the competition tribunal and modify or confirm it. Sorry, or confirm. So, thank you, Fidel. Shadan Point, you're correct. Number, number 16, sorry. Let's see your answers. St. Andrew says competition appeal court. And that's the only answer that I've received so far. And you're correct. It is the competition appeal court. So we've got three um, ways that we go about when dealing with um, the competition. So we've got competition tribunal, competition commission, and competition trial. Sorry, we've got the competition tribunal. Competition Commission and the Competition Appeal Court. So that is the three um, institutions that we need to do work with in, when we working with competition. Number 17, an institute that investigate restrictive business practices, abuse of dominant positions and mergers to achieve equity 
in the South African economy. And the Santa Claus says that's a competition commission. And uh, so then Andrews also says that's a competition commission. And both of you are, or both schools are correct. Well done. Thank you. Number 18. Average revenue is the amount earned by the firm for each unit of output sold and is calculated, uh, sorry, and is calculated by dividing the total revenue by the output. So let's see your answers here. There's no one, there's no answer received from number 18. So I'll just wait a few seconds to compare quickly before I share my answer. But, uh, so there's no answer so far. So basically, average revenue, um, that is the amount earned by the firm for each additional, sorry, that is the amount earned by the firm for each unit of output sold. And how do we calculate that? We calculate that by dividing our total revenue, our total income by our output. So they so basically give you the answer in this um, concept. So if you could maybe just read again and then you will see the answer is right in front of you. And I think that was a mistake. So the answer is average revenue because here they are basically telling you average revenue is so that is basically the answer so they have given it to you so you see how sometimes they can make a mistake but if you read the description then you can basically find the answer in the um, description number 19 the extra revenue earned from selling one additional unit. And the answer that I've received so far from the Santa Kral is marginal revenue, and they are correct. Um, let me just look up here as well as St. Andrew's marginal revenue. So remember, marginal is basically extra, and then here they tell you revenue. So therefore, you know that that is marginal revenue. Then number 20, an institution whose main function is to approve major mergers, adjudicate in cases of, of misconduct and issue orders. And um, the answer received is competition tribunal from Pasanta Kral. Um, and then St. Andrew says competition authority or regular, regular agency regulatory agency. So um, that is your concepts that you need to know. Now the next part of, of the work that you need to complete, they give us here name, give, list question. So this is normally the first question that you will receive under section B, whether it be question two, question three, or question four. And the, the only thing that they require of you is to name, give, or list. That's all. So you don't need to explain. That is all. So I'm going to give you about six minutes to complete this, and then we will compare our answers.
Right, so I've received quite a few answers from the school. So let us compare answers. So the, the first question is give any two examples of variable cost. Of course, there are more than two, but um, the question limits you to two. So I'm just going to compare the answers that I've received so far. So Fidel says electricity and transport. Um, you are correct. Uh, if a transport out more, say fuel. So that answer is correct. Um, then Leslie, see, I don't know which school you are you are from, so I can't acknowledge your school. Yeah, there's a capital um, expenditure and business income. And then for Santa Claus, um, says electricity and telephone. You are correct. Um, and that's all answers that I've received so far. Then number two, the ask us name any two institutions. Oh no, before I go to number two, um, I just want to say um, most people see electricity and transport and fuel. Of course, telephone could also be added as well as advertising or advertisements um, to that particular answer. So of course, um, you have more than two as possible answers, but you should only give two. And if you give more than two um, in your exams, the teacher will only mark the first um, two answers correct. So please take note of that as well. Then number two, name any two institutions that regulate unfair competition in South Africa. And um, the answers that I've received from Fairdale is competition commission and competition appeals court as well as Leslie C. Competition Commission. That's all that I've, I have so far. Um, and then for Santa Cruz as well, Competition Commission and Competition Tribunal. And then St. Andrews Competition Commission. Um, that's all. So remember, there are only three answers here. It's either the Competition Commission, Competition Tribunal, or the competition's appeal court. So that is the three that regulate unfair competition. However, they only ask you to mention or name two. So thank you to the schools for your answers thus far. Number three, here they ask us here, give any two examples of explicit cost for a firm. So let's see what your answers are. Uh, for Santa Claus says wages and interest. Um, Leslie C says um, raw materials and employee wages. Um, St. Andrew says um, rent payments and salaries and wages. And then Fedel says taxes and utilities, if it's for number three. So um, rent, wages, electricity, acceptable. Thank you. So most schools are correct. Um, then name any two examples of a perfect market structure. So remember, this is where the characteristics comes in, many buyers, many sellers, but just, they just want to ask you to give two examples of a perfect market structure. So where would you find a perfect market structure? And... No, they do not ask you, uh, Fidel, you've listed the characteristics. They do not ask you the characteristics. They just want an example of a perfect market structure. That's all. So they do not ask you about any characteristics. Um, so would it be your um, JSE, I think? Yeah, yeah. Santa Claus has mentioned JSE and your wheat market. Um St. Andrew says agricultural market and stock market, correct, both schools so far, and well done. Now we are doing, um, remember we are doing microeconomics. So microeconomics has to do with perfect markets and imperfect markets. So the next section of our work, we are going to do imperfect markets and we are specifically only going to focus on the monopoly structure for this particular questions. So you have about, let's see how many questions you have, about five questions. I'm going to give you five minutes 
to go through it. Of course, you have the booklet in front of you. So please make use of the booklet um, to write down your answer. And then when you compare, I'll just highlight what the correct answer is. So then you can also um, put in the correct answer. And of course, you must only give one option. You have to say choose the answer and write only the letter A or D next to the question number. So please do not give us um, more than one answer. So if, it, if you give A and C, it's unfortunately it's going to be incorrect. So only one, um, one answer. So I'm going to give you five minutes to do it quickly. Right. Thank you for your answers. Let's compare. So in 1.1, .1, although a monopoly, we all know a monopoly is um, a market structure where there's only one um, seller and many buyers can charge any price it wishes. It chooses A, the highest price, B, the price equal to the marginal cost, C, the price that maximizes profit, and D, com competitive prices. So um, let's look at the answers. And Andrew says C. Um, Fidel also says C. Santa Claus says C. Buren says B. And that's the answers received so far. Right. So the highest price, remember, they are already the only producer of that particular product. So therefore, they can charge any price. So in terms of highest price, um, they are already charging the highest price, I would say. B, the price equal to the marginal cost. No, it's not. And in competitive prices, no, it's not because they're the only people in the market. So therefore, the answer is C. So well done to those schools that have C correct that I've mentioned previously. 
just want to highlight it here for you so that you can also know that that is the correct answer. 1.1.2 An imperfect market will maximize its revenue where marginal revenue is A equal to marginal cost, um, B greater than marginal cost, C less than marginal cost, and D equal to the average cost. So basically all this question is asking you where would be the profit maximization point. And by now you should know that the profit maximization point is where MR, your marginal cost, sorry, MC is equal to MR. Um, and you other already say MR, so that is marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. So therefore your answer is A, and let's see who got that correct. Which schools got that correct? So, um, St. Andrews, well done. Fado, well done. St. De Grau. Um, Buren said B, unfortunately it's not B. Um, and that is your answer. So it is a profit maximization is where MR is equal to MC. Um, then 1.1.3, a natural monopoly is most likely to exist where there is A, large economies of skills, B, higher barriers to entry, C, government in the, sorry, government regulation of the industry, and D, long-term patents in an industry. So let's see what your answers are for 1.1.3. No, apologies. Um, then Andrew says it's A. Fidel says it is also A. As well as for Santa Claus says it's A. Buren says it's C. And that's all answer that we, answers that we have received thus far. So it is where a large economies of scales will take place. So well done to the schools that have the answer A. Moving on to 1.1.4, the, na the nature of a product under conditions of monopolistic competition is A, homogeneous, B, differentiated, C, static, D, environmental friendly. So um, it cannot be A because under a perfect competition, that is where they sell homogeneous products, products that are the same. So your only option that you'd have is B, C, and D. So let's look what you gave as an answer. 1.1.4. St. Andrew says it's B. Uh, for Santa Claus also says it's B. Um, Buren says it's A, and that's all answers that I've received thus far, and it is, of course, differentiated because they sell various products. So it can't, they don't take environment, uh, the environment into consideration when they sell the products, some businesses. It's also not static, so therefore, it's also not homogeneous, so therefore the only option is differentiated. And then 1.1.5, the demand curve of a monopolistic is also curve A, uh, marginal curve, B, marginal revenue, C, average revenue, and D, average cost. So let's look at the answers received. Santa Claus says it's C. Um, Andrew says it's B. Buren also says it's B. Fidel says it's B, and I see your answer now. Fidel, 1.1.4 is B, correct? So, um, the correct answer is C, average revenue curve. Right, moving on to oligopoly. So now we are moving on to a different market structure, which it's still part of imperfect competition. 
Um, so I'm going to give you five minutes as well to complete it because I think it's also five questions. So five minutes maximum. And can we also have more schools posting the answers so that we can also see that you are listening firstly and secondly, um, your interaction as well. So I'm going to give you five minutes. Right, the answers are coming nice and fast. Thank you. Um, the one school said that there's no audio. Um, yes, we allowed your learners to give their answers. Therefore, um, there was no audio. So let us compare our answers. So oligopoly. So firstly, we know monopoly is the, uh, the market structure where there's only one. Um, seller of a product that dominates the market. And oligopoly is where we have a few firms that is selling um, the same product, um, but they do not, they try to influence each other, but they can't really because they sell the similar type of product. For example, your um, garages. So we've got BP Shell engine. They all sell the same type of product, which is fuel. Um, but they can't really influence each other because when you're out of petrol or out of fuel, you have to go and fill up. The only thing that they can do is, of course, when they have um, the customer service or price leadership as well. That is the only different thing that they can do. Um, so 1.1, 1 .1, 1 
which of the following is most likely to be oli olipocaust? Oh, the word that's giving um, that minister yesterday that couldn't pronounce. Apologies. Um, so, which of the following is most likely to be uh, oligopoly? Um, so, A, market for corn, B, market for colas, C, market for aluminium, and then D, the market for ground coffee. So, um, let's see what your answers are. So, Alcis Revai says it's B. Um, St. Andrew says it's B. Just going through your answers. Leslie C says it's C. Santa Claus says it's D. Oh, I thank you, uh, Leslie. I see that you're from Bauai. Um, Fredo, no, no, no. I haven't received 1.1.1 from Fredo. That was the other answer. Oh, Fredo says 1.1.1 is B. Right. So the answer and the, the answer is C. So most of you said it's B. It's unfortunately incorrect. So the answer is C. Right. 1.1.2, the market structure in which firms are interdependent. So oligopoly, monopolistic competition, monopoly, and perfect competition. So unfortunately, it can't be perfect competition because they all operate under the same market conditions. Monopoly, unfortunately not. Um, monopolistic competition, oligopoly, that's the only two remaining. So let's see what is your answer before I share mine. So, 1.1.2, St. Andrew says it's B. 1.1.2, Altis Revai also says it's B. 1.1.2, Belhai says it's A. Pedalai says it's B. For Santa Claus says it's B. Right. So those are the answers that we have received. Um, unfortunately, it's also not monopolistic competition. It is therefore oligopoly. Like I said in the beginning, it's basically markets that sell exactly the same stuff but they are interdependent. Um, 1.1.3, the oligopoly model that predicts that the oligopoly will tend to be very rigid is model. So it's A, or not, B, Stockenberg, C, dominant firm, and D, kinked demand. So let us look at your answers. So Andrew says it's D. Altis Ravai says it's D. Nkulu Sisi says it's D. Um, Bawa I says it's also D. Um, the Santa Claus says it's D. Right. So the answer is D. So most of you are correct. Well done. I just, um, I tend to take a bit longer with your answers because I have to scroll back. So if you hear me taking a bit longer, I'm scrolling back so that I can see if the schools gave the correct answers as well as acknowledge the various schools. Right. So 1.1.4, suppose that three oli oligopolist firms are currently charging 12 rand for their product. The three firms are about the same size. Firm A decides to raise its price to 18 rand and announces it to the press that it will be doing so because higher prices are needed to restore the economic viability to the industry. 
Firms B and C go along with firm A and raise their prices as well. And this is an example of A, price leadership, B, collusion, C, dominant firm market, and then D, stock and, stock and bell model. So let us look at your answers. Um, so Andrew says it's A. Alsis Ravai says it's A. Alpha Santa Claus says it's A. Bao I says it's A. Peter, I see your answer here for 1.1.3 is D, that you are correct for 1.1.3. We are currently busy with 1.1.4. Fidel says it's A. All right. So all of you are correct. It is a price leadership. And a good example of this would be um, that I can think of would be um, if the one store charges uh, 20 rand for a loaf of bread, all the other stores will also charge because they're in the same um, market and therefore they would also like to benefit from the same um, thing. And another good example that I could also think of when talking about stores is when the one store announced that they are doing door-to-door um, -to -door delivery and then all the other um, stores also followed. For example, Checkers does the 6060, um, then Pick and Pay started doing Pick and Pay ASAP. And then Woods also has um, its own delivery service that I can't get to now. But that is an example of 1.1.4. Um, then in, in, in the oligopoly market, the firm will make A in the long run, normal profit. Um, a is normal profit. B is economic profit. C is also economic profit. So that, that's most probably an error. And then D is zero profit. Let us look at what your answers are. So, uh, St. Andrew says it's A. Alsis I also says it's A possibly. Unfortunately, you cannot write that in the exams. Um, um, possibly, um, that's what I meant. And then 1.1.5 1 um, for Santa Claus says it's B. Um, but oh, I says it's B. And then um, Altis also says C. And Fedel says it's B. So um, Fedel, but oh, Santa Crow, um, you are all correct. Well done. It is economic profit. Right, moving on to monopolistic competition. So, here's again five questions. I'm going to give you about five minutes to complete it and then you'll compare our answers. I just would like to acknowledge um, Inculacis as well for giving um, the correct answer there for 1.1.5. And then uh, as an AJ, I don't know what school is that. You're also correct. Um, thank you.
But I thought authors are coming in very nice and fast. Uh, thank you to the schools. We will, of course, acknowledge you for your answers. So let us start comparing our answers. 1.1.1, a market with few entry barriers and with many firms that sell differentiated products is A, perfectly competitive, B, a monopoly, C, monopolistic competition, and D, oligopoly. So um, let's see what the answers are from the various schools. So St. Andrew says it's C for number one. Oh, I says it's C. Alsis Revai says it's C. Fedel says it's C. Um, then there's a Philip S also says it's C. I don't know what school you are from. Nkulesi also says it's C. Um, and most of all of you are correct in saying that the answer is C. And then an example 1.1.2, an example of monopolistic competition in South Africa is A, the banking sector, B, the mobile phone market, C, fast food outlets, and D, ESCOM. So let's look at your answer. So St. Andrew says that it is C. Oh, I says it's C. Fidel says it is. No, that was for 1.1.2, apologies. Oh, we are, oh, sorry, we are busy with 1.1.2. Fidel. That is C. Alsi says it's C. Yeah, so those are the schools. Well done. The answer is C. All right, 1.1.3. The most important factor in determining the long run profit potential in monopolistic competition is A, free entry and exit, B, the elasticity of the market demand curve, C, the elasticity of the firm's um, demand curve, and then D, the response of competing firms to a change in price. So let us look at your answers. And Andrew says it's A. Oh, I says it's C. Alsi says it's C. And that's the only answer that I have so far. Fidel says it is B. Yeah. So... The correct answer is A. And I think it's only one school that got that correct. So I'll well do that school. 1.1.4. Uh, monopolistic competitive firms have monopoly power because they A. Face downward sloping demand curves. B. Uh, great in number. C. Uh, freedom of entry. And D are free to advertise. So let us look at your answers. And Andrew says it's A. Our oh, I says it's A. One point one point four Alsi says it's A. Inclusive says it's B. Right. So the correct answer is A. Well done to the schools that got it correct. 1.1.5. A monopolistic 
competition, sorry, a monopolistic com competition firm in the long run, equilibrium will make A, negative profit, B, zero profit, C, positive profit, and then D, both positive and negative profit. So let us look at your answers. What do you say? Well, I says it's B and Andrews. No. And Andrews says it's B. And Fidel says it's C. Alsi says it's B. So the correct answer is D. Both positive and negative profit in the long run. Moving on. We are now going to have our matching columns. So this is only on monopoly, as you could see here. It's only monopoly. And there are about six questions. So I'm going to give you about four to six minutes to compare. And one thing that I could ask or kindly ask from the schools, could we rather share the answers as we go along? Because going back, I don't want, to, um, if you share all your answers at once and then I have to go back the whole time, and then I might also miss a school out that gave the answer, which is unfair because they are also participating. So could we rather Give the answer as we go along so that you can acknowledge you all. Thank you. So I'm going to give you six minutes to complete it because there is six questions. Right, the answers are coming in nice. Thank you so much. So let us compare then. So um, 1.2.1, nature of the product. And let us see what your answers are. So St. Andrew says it's C. In Korea, CZ, you, CZ, um, secondary, you're giving. Answers, but I don't know for which question it is. Fidel C. Oh, I C. Alsis Rava I C. Inclusive C. C. 
and that is for um, number one. And all of you are correct, so this is C. Now, 1.2.1, the answer is C. Um, then, moving on to 1.2.2, artificial monopoly. Um, let us read what your answer, sorry, before I move on. So, we said 1.2.1 is C, and the reason it's C is because there is no closed substitute. 1.2.2, um, artificial monopoly. Um, let us... And thank you, Fidel. I see your answer there is C for number, not Fidel, um, for Santa Claus. Your answer is C for number one. Let us look at what the other answers are. Uh, St. Andrew says 1.2.2 is A. Bauer says it's A. Alsis says it's A. Um, Santa Claus says it's A. Nkulesizi says it's A. And Buren as well, A. Um, and all the schools are correct. Um, the answer is A, legal right of a holder to exclusively manufacture a product. C, sorry, not C, 1.2.3 competition. Um, let us see what your answers are for competition. Inclusive says it's B. The Santa Claus says it's B. Oh, I says it's B. And St. Andrews also says it is B. That is competition. And Unfortunately, it's not B because um, B's option is when one business in the market will control the supply of goods and services. So it is E. Faces a downward sloping demand curve. 1.2.4. Um, monopoly. And let us read your answers here. Um, so Andrew says it's D. Santa Claus says it's E. Buren says it's B. Uranai and Alsis Ravai also says it's B. And I think there was only two schools that got this correct. The answer is D. Electricity in South D. Electricity in South Africa is provided by the government enterprise, and that is an example of a monopoly as well. Um, then sunk costs, that's 1.2.5. And let us read what you have there. One, someone says it's G. Uh, St. Andrews, apologies. Um, for Santa Claus, also says it's G. Nkulusizi says it's G. And Alsis Ravai also says it's G. That's the answers that I've received so far. And you're all correct. Well done. So cost cannot be recovered should the firm leave the market. That is sunk cost. 1.2.6 deadweight loss. Um, let us read what you have as an answer. Uh, so Andrews, could you just hold on with the oligopoly answers, please? Um, 
for Santa Clausius question 1.2.3 throws out. Throws out answers for the other concepts in this particular question. Yes, it does. Um, One point two point six. Dead weight loss. I'm just looking at your answers quickly. So for Santa Claus, yes, it's F. Um, St. Andrews also says it's F. Oh, I says it's F. And so unless include C Z, I says it's F. Buren I, it's F. And then now see your answer for um, number five as well. Buren, apologies for not acknowledging you early on. Uh, Fadel says it's F, as well as inclusive is a secondary says it's F. Right, and all of you are correct. Reduction in economic well-being. Sorry, in economic welfare caused by a reduction in both consumer and producer surplus. So now we're moving on to uh, oligopoly. Also about six questions. So um, I'm going to give you again four minutes to complete it and then share our answers as we go along. Right, I think four minutes is too much because lots of schools are giving the answers already. So we are going to share our answers. So 1.2.1 is price leadership is the concept in column A. And the school's answers, uh, St. Andrew says it's E. Oh, I. Purent says it's E. I'm just taking a bit long because I have to go back to the previous answers because I'd like to acknowledge everyone. Alt is I says it's B. Philip E says it's E. Purent I says it's E. Fadel says it's E. And that. Um, it's all correct. Those of you that said it's E, it's correct. One firm fixes the price and the other accepts, it's, accepts it as is, as the market price. So that is price leadership. B, duopoly. So let us see what your answers are for B. Sorry, for 1.2.2, duopoly. Uh, St. Andrew says it's C. Bahai says it's C. Fidel says it's C. Inclusive says it's C. Philip S. says it's C. Senor Jonga Hai says it's C. Alsis Ravai says it's C. Uh, thank you, Philip. I see that you're from Rosendale. Hi. All right. So all of you that said it's C, you're correct. Two firms dominate the market, and that is a duopoly. 
1.2.3 inelasticity, sorry, inelastic demand. Um, let's read your answers. Rosendahl says it's B for 1.2.3. Nicolaisi says it's B. Buren says it is B, Buren High. Pulses River High says it's B. Santa Clara High says it's B. And all of you are correct. A change in price causes a smaller percentage change in the quantity demanded. So basically, um, if a product increases from, let's say, 1 rand to 1 rand 50 cents, the demand will unfortunately also be influenced because people will people maybe didn't prepare for it. Therefore, they will experience inelastic demand. Right. 1.2.4 explicit collusion. Um, so Santa Claus says it's A. Nicolai says it's A. Alcides Ravai says it's A. Fedal I says it's A. Uh, Rosendahl says it's A. Uren says it's A. Uh, as well as an Andrews says it's A. Right. And all of you are correct. And it says they open collusion and oligopolies meet formally to decide on prices and production. So it's basically known that these people collude or these firms, apologies, collude um, within the particular market. 1.2.5 non-price competition. And... Let us read your answers here. 1.2.5. Alsis Rabai says it's D. Fidel says it's F. Uh, for Santa Claus says it is D. Rosendahl says it is F. Nkule says it's F. Buren says it's F. Right, so those are the answers that I've received. Um, Bauer, I see there that you said it's D as well as in Andrews. So those of you that said it's D are correct, doing business over the internet. And a good example of that would be takealot.com, Superbless, um, all those um, big companies. They would um, encourage people to rather do online shopping than going into going into the shop physically and going to buy that item. Um, so that is one example of non-price competition. Of course, we've got the loyalty cards. That is another example. So um, if you don't have this particular card, then you can't um, benefit from the discount. And that would be your smart shoppers, your extra save. Your clicks club card, um, this your this game club card, for example. Um, so that would be non-price. So you basically you didn't even have to pay um to get the card, but the fact that you have the card, you get the various discounts that the card has. Um another example that I could also mention there, um if you were a certain insurer, then they, then they encourage you to only um fuel up with a certain um, garage and then you get certain benefits so of course that's indirectly non-price because you don't have to pay to for that competition and in 1.2.6 branding let's see what your answers are Alsis Ravai gives two answers here they give F and D um, Buren High say, well not Buren um, Fidel I says it's D. And there's someone that says it's F, so it seems like um, there are two answers given. 
the one says it's F, the one says it's D. Um, for Santa Claus says it's F. Nicolas Caesar says it's F. Senor, Senor Jongo I says it's F. Um, Rosendahl says it's D. Nicolas Caesar says it's F. Uh, Buren I says it's D. Well, I says it's F. St. Andrew says it's F. Right. So those of you that said it's F, then you are correct. Encourages people to buy new products from um, the same range. So, for example, um, Nike would um, have one particular shoe and then they bring in another shoe and then that's going to, of course, encourage you to buy that particular product. Moving on, to monopolistic competition. Um, I'm going to give you about uh, four minutes maximum since we are almost done with the session. Um, you may share your answers now in the chat. Right, let's compare our answers. The answers are flooding in. Thank you, schools. So, well, all I see is for 1.2.1, .1, it's B. Um, also, I also see it's B. Buren says it's E. Um, St. Andrews also says it's B. Uh, for Santa Claus says E, right, and then uh, in Cluesis it also says it's E, so those are the answers that I've received so far. So let us compare advertising. Um, so those of you that said it's E, the answers is uh, a variety of designs in um, the packaging of the same, of the same article. Um, those of you that said it's B used to differentiate from the company's product. And those of you that said it's B, you're correct. Because if you think of advertising, every advertising or advertisement that you've seen so far is different. So unfortunately, it cannot be E. So 1.2.1 is B. Thank you to the schools that participated and shared the answers. 1.2.2, heterogeneous. Um, let's see what the answers are. Buren says it's C. Um, St. Andrew says it's C. Gulwes says 1.2.2 is C. Sinyong Jonga highs. No, that's other answers. Apologies. Uh, 
St. Andrew says it's C. Right. So, for Santa Claus says it's B. That's 1.2.2. Um, Yeah, so I'm just checking quickly because as I'm checking and then the phone just jumps up um, because your answers are coming in nice and steadily. Um, Alter Zerva also says it's C. The I says it's C. Right, so those of you that said it's C, your correct products that are not the same. 1.2.3 non-price competition and we had non-price competition earlier on as well. Um, so let us read what you, your answers are. Power I says it's D. Buren says it is D. St. Andrew says it's D. Santa Claus says it's D. And Sinyong Jonga Hai says it is D. And you're all correct. Occurs when the sellers focus on the product's features rather than the price of it. Um, 1.2.4 monopolistic competition. Uh, for Santa Claus it is F. In Kule says it says it's F. Senior Jonga High says it's F. As an Andrew says it's F, as well as Al says um, And that is the only answers that I've received thus far. So the answer is a well done. And it says here, type of competition often found in the retail sector of the economy. 1.2.5, profit maximization. Inclusive says it's A. Senior Jonga High says it's A. For Santa Claus says it's A. Alston Ravai says it's A. And Andrew says it's A. Um, I think that's the only answers that I've, I have so far. Um, and you're all, and including CZ also says it's A. Um, and you're all correct. Profit maximization is where MR is equal to MC or MC is equal to MR. Um, that's exactly the same thing. And then lastly, two point, sorry, 1.2.6 differentiated products. So let us look what your answers are for 1.2.6. Glacis says C products are not the same. Um, the Santa Claus also says C. Um, St. Andrew says E. As well as by I. And that, that's the only answers that I have so far for 1.2.6. Buren says it's B. Right. So the answer is E. A variety of designs in the packaging of the same article. So, we still have about 10 minutes left of the session. So, would we kindly complete these eight um, questions for 1.3 so, so that we can compare it quickly? Right. So 1.3.1, when one firm takes over, oh, no, sorry, when one firm takes over another firm, 
that firm then ceases to exist and then um, so as an Andrew says merger or acquisition unfortunately you can't give two answers you must just give one answer so can kindly um, give the correct answer there is an Andrews after Sravai says it's a merger Oh, the other schools, you're more than welcome to share your answer. But oh, I says it's a takeover. Right, so the correct answer, and Andrews has mentioned it earlier on, it is an acquisition. But um, for future sake, please just give one answer. So um, don't, for, especially to the learners, do not give um uh, or answer because at the end of the day um the marker will unfortunately look for that one specific term so they cannot decide um on your behalf which answer to accept so when you look at these terminologies um it might be overwhelming yes but at the same time stick to what you think it is so thank you to um st andrews for your answer uh, 1.3.2 when the market produces the best possible mix of goods and services desired by consumers. Um, one point, um, I think it's Bahai, or no, I'm lying, it's um, it's pure and I that's allocative efficiency. You're correct, also is Rabai, and Bahai also says allocative efficiency as well as an Andrew. So all of you are correct with your answers. Thank you. A group of producers, that's 1.3.3, enter into a formal agreement to collude, um, to fix prices, limit supply, and limit competition. So what is your answer by 1.3.3? Also, it's revised. It's a cartel. Well done. And that's the only answer. Okay, so hey, yo, uh, for Santa Crow is coming through with all the answers. Um, you're correct. Um, for Santa Crow by 1.3.3, Kotao, as well as Baha'i. Yeah, Baha'i. Um, yeah. Moving on to 1.3.4, an informal agreement between two or more firms to divide the market, set prices or limit production to gain an unfair advantage in the market. So 1.3.3 and 1.3.4 might sound the same, but unfortunately it's not. Therefore, you must read further through the question. And let's see what the answers are here. Um, St. Andrews says, St. Andrews also said a cut for 1.3.3, so we're acknowledging you. For 1.3.4, they say it's collusion. Um, um, so an interested collusion. I'm just looking at all the other answers here quickly. Um, the Santa Claus is oligopoly. Office revises collusion. Um, Bahai says Kotao. But now they're saying oligopoly, so I'll also revise. So could you kind of, oh, that's for 1.3.5. Um, so the correct answer is collusion. Products that are that the first slightly in physical appearance, packaging, service, and all brand names, and that is for 1.3.5. So I'll just sort of I said that that is oligopoly. 
Um, ons sê graas het differentiated slash branding. Um, St. Andrews is differentiated products. And that's the only answer that I have so far. And um, Santa Claus and St. Andrews, you are correct, it is differentiated products. Um, 1.3.6, when there are two, sorry, when there are only two oligopolies in the market. And St. Andrew says that it is a duopoly. As well as for Santa Claus, it's a duopoly. As well as Leslie C says it's a duopoly. That's from Bauai. Um, and you're all correct with the duopoly. 1.3.7. I'm just going to read your answer quickly. So they say it's perfect. Um, imperfect competition, St. Andrew says, um, for Santa Claus says it's perfect. Right. As well as Senior, Ju Senior Jonga High says it's perfect. Um, so you are correct. Right. Uh, it's perfect. Competition. Right, 1.3.8. It sounds similar to 1.3.1, .1, but it's not the same when two firms join to form a single firm. And the answer was given previously, and it is um, not a monopoly from um, for Santa Claus, it is a merger. Uh, St. Andrew's merger, there we go. Um, and then that's uh, as well as inclusive Z is a merger, else is Revai merger. Right. So that is the, um, that's your answers for that. Then section B, unfortunately, we are running out of, but remember teachers in the classroom as well as learners, um, that it would just gone through um, is basically additional resources that you could use for revision purposes as well as for studies and for your upcoming um, trial exams as well as your national senior certificate. So um, I would encourage you all to complete section B um, on your own as well as for the teachers. You can use this as your revision um, material um, in the classroom. Um, that's it. Then from me, uh, there is um, market failures as well. Um, so there's quite a few questions that you can go through as well as um, contemporary economic issues for those schools that have started with this particular topic. And of course, this is going to help the learners um, preparing um, for this particular question as well. And then I think they have attached essay questions as well. Um, they have attached essay questions, worked out essay questions as well. I just want to quickly touch on that. You have introdu your introduction, body, um, additional and conclusion. Introduction is your definition of the particular topic. Body is what you, the question asks you. Additional is basically a higher order question as well. Um, and that's 10 marks as well as your conclusion as well. So to the teachers and the learners, Thank you so much for attending and your participation um, in today's session. I know it was cold, so some of you are, some of you really took the time and effort to come and wake up this morning and to attend the session. So thank you so much and all the best for um, the term three as well as um, as well as um, your final ex exams and trial exams um, preparations.